T minus 10, 9, 8. We have a go for main engine start. We have main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. So another year, another Navy video. Uh, if you've missed my last two, I guess I'll start linking them up here. Last year was certainly epic. We were spent two nights, three days, basically out on an aircraft carrier in the middle of the Atlantic. So that video will be up here. And the year before that, uh, we did the photo shoot in Annapolis, where the Naval Academy is located. And we basically went out into a river and photographed um, everything uh, in the rain, in the river, a lot of water. That video will be up here as well. So uh, this being the third year, it did not disappoint. We flew to New Jersey. You can kind of see some of the travel footage from that intro. Uh, flew up there to a studio that had a LED wall, which was something new for me. So there was a huge LED and I'll show some behind the scenes um, footage. But we had this just massive LED wall as our backdrop. And then above us, we had a uh, another LED panel, huge LED panel above us so we could project images and light down from above as well as kind of from the wall back there. So pretty, pretty neat stuff. I, I have not uh, worked with a screen uh, like that before and based off the concept of going to space, because uh, we were basically setting these photos as if we were on the moon. So uh, we kind of uh, needed something like that uh, in the background so we could project uh, whatever backdrops that, that we needed to kind of sell the effect. And then on the floor, we used, uh, I think it was 3,000 pounds of concrete mix uh, and that stuff. And that, that can make a mess, and that stuff gets heavy quick. So we uh, unloaded bags and bags, as you saw kind of from the uh, intro video there, uh, on some plastic on the floor, uh, and kind of created enough of a surface where if we got down low enough, we could shoot uh, into that screen and have a clean kind of moon horizon line across the back of the frame. So really neat stuff, kind of... <laughs> falls right in line with the other previous uh, Navy, uh, Army Navy game uniform uh, photo shoots and video shoots uh, for their uniform release uh, in conjunction with Under Armour. So they make some pretty cool uniforms and it's an honor to be uh, actually chosen as a photographer to go up and help them um, promote and show off uh, all the hard work that they do uh, to create these uniforms. And then of course they want to push this stuff out uh, as it is part of the rivalry with Army as Army um, puts out their uniforms as well. So let's talk about this experience and working with a LED screen like we had up there in the studio. So it was one of those kind of situations where you get in, at least for me, where I get into and it's a lot of wheels start turning in my head. Uh, there are a lot of pros to those types of screens and then there's some cons on the flip side. So. You know, one of the pros is you have uh, infinite composition, so you can put anything on that screen, uh, and it can be a moving, uh, like a video, or it can be a still, or you can pause the video, that type of thing. 
And so a con of that is the infinite possibilities <laughs> of backdrops. So you've got to, I mean, it can be overwhelming because of the possibilities. So, and I kind of found it that way at the beginning, and then we had to kind of go through some files, figure out what it was that we we're trying to show and what looked best on the screen. And it, sometimes it was a matter of me getting there, looking through the camera as the video played. And in this case, uh, for some of the backgrounds, it was the rotation of the earth with the sun hitting the earth. So you had like a shadow moving across uh, the planet here, you know, or the globe. And so it was a matter of where kind of place that highlight to dark shadow area and to make it into the uh, composition. So, and, and I'll show some, some shots where I was just progressively shooting, looking around on the screen, seeing what was working, that type of thing. And, you know, for some of them, we did pause it and kind of figure out a spot where it was uh, working. Um, there was also, based on the resolution of the file and the background, there could be banding uh, on the screen, which was instantly picked up by the camera. And that meant that I needed to shoot at a very wide aperture. So, and it just kind of fell into line too, where I have just picked up this, uh, the Canon uh, 28 to 70 uh, lens, the F2 lens, which is a complete monster. This is the 24 to 70 over here, my, my usual standard, this being the 28 to 70. And so you can kind of see the form factor. There's a definite weight factor with this lens. Uh, also, there's no uh, image stabilization with the 28 to 70, but you've got that extra space on the aperture where you can go wider than 2.8. And I spent the whole day uh, between 2.8 and 2.0 uh, on this, this lens. So that was a huge help in dropping and, and, and knocking that screen uh, out of focus, uh, softening it, kind of getting some nice bokeh off of that, uh, you know, the, the image, wherever the image was on the background. So uh, that kind of, Kind of ha hamstrung me a little bit, so I was I had to shoot with the with the super wide f-stop, so I had to adjust everything uh, to that. So you know I had something kind of locked in at two eight or wider. The other um, factor with using the LED screens, and we had one against that back wall, and then we had one above us, was the ambient light that it was tossing off. Uh, the for some of the shots, we had images above the top that we're using to kind of reflect into uh, the mask at the helmet, the top of the helmet. It was a very reflective helmet. And so uh, we put images on that to kind of help um, mask that. Uh, and then we had a gradient, which was really nice there too, because then it could you could dial in the brightness uh, upper, you know, higher or lower based off of what we're trying to achieve. And that would obviously affect the exposure. So. I'm stuck at my aperture being fairly wide, well, very wide open, and then I needed to use my shutter at a slow enough shutter speed where I was recording the ambient light in there to, to match the exposures of my subject along with the screen in the background, and then using, a lot of times, using that ambient light on the overhead to kind of fill in the shadows. Um, it was almost like a, a fill light, an overhead, large overhead fill light. We wanted these images to be dramatic. You can see that in the results. And so a lot of times I just used what was coming off those screens along with a couple other lights that I'll talk about in a minute. The first half of the shoot was mainly uh, during like the video capture. So we were capturing video for the um, release video with the uniform and the hype video that they'll play in the stadium. And so uh, I was working with Matt, who was the cinematographer there, and we used basically one light for the, for the main part. Uh, and that along in conjunction with the screens uh, overhead and then the screen on that back wall were basically the light sources for a lot of the beginning stuff. So after we had basically the video in the can and then I brought out some strobes that I can show here in some of these behind the scenes clips. And having learned what I learned on the first half of the shoot, I knew I didn't really need to do too, too much with the strobes, but I wanted to get some uh, harsher um, lines, kind of lighting lines on, on my edges and stuff like that. So um, I, I put one light with the uh, reflector kind of on the back side, uh, camera left um, behind my subject. And then on the other side, uh, I used the beauty dish. So it was going to be a little bit softer. If you watch my videos on here, you know I don't like to, to use um, the same two modifiers very often uh, on both sides of my subject. 
just because it, it makes things a little too symmetrical. So to mix it up, I had a beauty dish on one side and a reflector on the other. We also popped in a blue gel on that reflector on um, the left side, camera left, um, for some of the shots as well. Um, to give us just some variety, what we're going, what we're doing, kind of that that space, kind of blue, kind of feel, along with the background that we had going. Uh, so we threw that in um, as well. And then uh, let me let me back up a little bit too. So then we also used uh, my Pro Light mods, what I've got uh, one right here. Uh, and we did a setup there with the two ProLite mods that I'll show uh, in conjunction with those two strobes on either side. Uh, no fill light from the front. So this is a, a good example of how powerful a fill light can be, as in like if you have it there or you don't have it or just the, the amount of power that you put into a fill light. So we actually took it completely out to give that dramatic feel, and it just shows, I'll show, um, uh, samples of uh, with the fill light and then without the fill light so you can kind of see uh, the dramatic results and how much better it looked in this case uh, for what we were shooting. Uh, we took that out, used those. Um, it was basically four lights, two in the mods, two on the edges, and got those really neat shots with the mods, with the smoke and, and all that kind of fun stuff. Then we moved to the uh, detail shots of the uniform and that is where the mod this guy right here kind of came into play again, as you can see in the videos. I moved it around kind of camera right because we needed some light on some of the patches of the uniform uh, and uh, like some of the details on the on the pants and stuff like that. And so uh, I brought that around to use it, and I didn't take it off because of the helmet. Uh, you, when you have something that reflective, everything shows up in that helmet. And actually having these circles like they are, they kind of somewhat mimic uh, stars, like if, if we had anything kind of pop up in the helmet, you know, around any of the reflective parts and stuff like that. So it, it worked out as a reflective piece, like I've done in the past with NHL teams and stuff like that, uh, and the visors, um, where it looks like arena lights. So used it as a uh, fill for some of those uh, shot detail shots um, that you'll see that I kind of will play on the video here. Uh, and then kind of to wrap up uh, the images, uh, basically bringing them in to Photoshop because of you know how neat everything, well, how, how good everything looked basically out of camera with the setup, with the camera settings, uh, this freaking amazing lens. Uh, I really didn't have much to do on the post end of things. It was just a matter of really kind of just bringing uh, the blacks down on the screen uh, to get rid of any banding that might be there, that type of thing. But most of it was taken care of in camera uh, using this lens and, and shooting so you know, wide open. I think for the detail shots, I might have gone to 2.8 for the other kind of artistic type stuff. Uh, I was pretty close to 2.0, like fully wide open, if not you know, somewhere in like 2.2 two or somewhere in between the 2.8 um, spectrum there. So it was a really unique shoot, I mean, a 12 hour day, long, long day, fun experience, something totally new. That's kind of this day and age, that, that's what kind of gets me going and gets me motivated and gets me inspired is, is have, or, you know, just having these photo shoots like this that uh, are something that I have not done before and I really have to kind of think on my feet in, in order to create the images that we created uh, to you know, promote this, this uniform. And the crew we had there, just excellent, awesome guys, uh, and it's so fun to kind of get together with them. So I think that pretty much wraps it up here. I've got a lot of content. Been so busy around here with the Pro Light mods and other things that um, I'm sitting on a mound of content that I've got to get out here in the next couple weeks. So if you feel like this video is worthy, please you know, hit that like button. If you want to see more content just like this, uh, hit that subscribe button down there. If you know someone who could benefit from this video, please share it. I think I'm, I'm closing in on uh, 10,000 uh, subs on here, which is kind of crazy. So it'd be great to maybe hit that mark in the near future. So uh, share this video uh, with anyone you think that might enjoy it and learn something from it. Uh, and drop your comments down below as well. Uh, I try to do my best to, uh, to get in there and, and answer if you have any uh, questions or just comments on photo shoots just like this. And uh, stay safe and healthy out there and I will see y'all in the next one.